first of all, we're here in Abu Dhabi. It's the Ghana Investment Week, and it's happening on the sidelines of Abu Dhabi's Sustainability Week, so it's a really great time to be here. You were here just 10 months ago. That's right. At Expo. So why don't we start with a bit of an overview? Where do you see the greatest potential, especially from an economic standpoint? We have a lot of people who are excited to do business. Where should they be looking right now? What are the state of affairs? Our industrial development, as well as our agricultural development, our areas also which one can foresee uh, important linkages being established between our two economies. Ghana and UAE can bear a lot of fruit for both sides. But also keep in, keeping in mind, as you mentioned earlier, that you'd like to move and you will be moving from a more commodities-based economy to more industrial. So what kind of measures will the Ghana government uh, take and make in order to help push that transition? That transition is anchored in, 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 in some ways in conventional means. You're talking about an investment climate mm -hmm. that is propelled by law as well as by policy to be able to nurture as well as protect industrial developments. We have a very extensive investment pro protection code that guarantees the security of investments in our country. And at the same time, there's also has also a fiscal and monetary arrangements that are very sympathetic towards uh, the, the, the growth and nurturing of industrial activities. And um, increasingly, a more and more efficient electricity supply uh, area, uh, making sure that power is available uh, at uh, affordable rates for industry is obviously very key for industrial development. So there's a raft of, of measures, both fiscal, monetary, as well as legal, that are there to inspire and protect industrial developments. You mentioned electricity, but Ghana's electricity tariffs are still some of the highest yeah, in the region. Well, but but a lot of effort, a lot of work is being done systematically. But because the key, yes, the, but at the same time, the security of, of, of supply in the, in the electricity area is one of the highlights of the Canadian economy. There may be economies in the area which have lower tariffs, but the supply of electricity is also more unstable. Uh, that is no longer the case in Ghana. Ghana, the electricity supply is very stable and continues to be, and touch wood will be, will be so for the decade ahead of us. Inshallah. You mentioned the 7% economic growth rate. This was, of course, before COVID. There was a bit of a slowdown. 2022 numbers haven't been released, but what do you expect we'll be seeing? We'll be looking at about a 5% rate of growth, which is the, 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 the target for this year, 5.6, 5 5.7 overall rate of growth. And we're hoping that by 2024, we'll resume the 7% trajectory that we had in the course of my first term. So we're here, as mentioned, in Abu Dhabi. You're here, of course, for Sustainability Week. Ghana, like several other countries, made commitments at COP26 in Glasgow, COP27 in Egypt. This year, we're very excited to be hosting COP28 in the UAE. So what plans does Ghana have to increase renewable energy in the country? The target, the conventional target we'll be working, we'll be working at is that by 2030, at least 10% of our energy supply will be the renewables. So far, we're talking about something in the area of 3% of our economy is dependent uh, on renewable supplies. We're looking at a 10% transformation. And we're hoping that by the 2050 target, uh, the majority of our energy supplies will be in the renewables. But of course, because there's still significant deposits the hydrocarbon in, in our, especially offshore in Ghana, so which are still untapped, we have to find a way of bringing the value of those resources up into play. So if we look at this room, a lot of potential investors, what would you say are the greatest opportunities, especially in the sustainable and green energy sector? And then what is the government of Ghana doing to protect and enhance UAE investments? Mm -hmm. The picture that there is in the country is of a country that is, first of all, very stable 
as a democratic system of government. We don't have any big problem with elections, with the transfer of power after elections in Ghana. It's, uh, the, the, there are no eruptions, and difficult, sometimes there are challenges, inevitable in any country in the world, but it has uh, both laws and policies that are there to protect them. Um, and we want to develop this privileged relationship with the investors from the UAE. And we're looking for a privileged relationship with the UAE in general. What would you say makes the UAE a strategic, a strategic partner for Ghana? First of all, its own position in the world as the crossroads of, of economic development, both out of Europe, out of Asia, and out of Africa. is uniquely placed to be able to take advantage of, the, of that and help drive economic growth in all these three important continents in the world. So there is that. And it is one that is already being very well leveraged by the people over here. Uh, we, and I think also there's a sympathetic environment. Ghanaians uh, feel very much at home. I, I don't get the opportunity to come here very often, but every time I come, after I adjust to the time difference in the camps and the, uh, 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 an, an area where. The, so I think there's a lot. There's a lot going in the relationship. That, that would be mutually beneficial. One last message for investors here in the audience. I, I know in a previous interview you said, so many opportunities, so much money to be made. So what would be your final message You're for today? You're in a country that is, is stable and that is determined to grow, grow rapidly. And we're looking for uh, partners that are also uh, secure, determined to grow long-term partnerships with us in Ghana. And we believe that our country is well positioned to the, generate the opportunities, both for you and for us, that will give us a very, very strong future together. President Nana Kufuado, thank you so much for your time today. Madam, thank you very much.